I know I'm late and no one gives a shit anymore, but can we take some time to talk about the ever-loving state of the major and the RMRs? I was so done with this. I was like watching the RMRs while I was sick and the RMRs were making me sicker. I'm not gonna lie. The production was like really poor you know not often you say that about blast i can't believe we've got to this stage where we are doing the send-off for the major right and i cannot believe that th this is the list of teams that we've got i can't believe it guys <laughs> i don't believe it you might say i can't believe it i made the joke i was saying you may as well call this major sweet major because, you know, like home sweet home or something. For the send-off to CSGO, this is trash. This is absolutely trash. And this is what you're all going to have to watch and pretend to enjoy. The absolute slop that's being served up as, like, high-level competitive CS. So we'll talk a little bit about how we end up with this. But I just want to draw your attention to the legends. The legends. Okay, these are the legends. Obviously, teams I don't have a problem with being legends, okay? Na'Vi, they're not great right now, but who is? No one, spoiler. Heroic, they'll never win a tournament. <laughs> but, um, you know, they love second. Second's cool. Uh, no problem with Heroic. I think they're probably the second best team in the world right now still, even though they're number one. Vitality, I got no problem with that. Right? They fucking bottle everything, but whatever. Furia at a push, but not for me. But at a push, it's okay. Everyone else on that list is dog shit and doesn't and is in no way a fucking legend. It's a clown fiesta. Bad news eagles. What? Nine? Nine nine? What? Into the fucking breach? Into the breach? Into my breaches goes a big pile of shit. That's what I say. Into the fucking breach. And everyone is trying to pretend this is good. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, it's under... Right, we're going to get to some really stupid fucking Reddit opinions. Everyone loves them on a stream. People are saying this is good. It's like, yeah, man. The great thing about Counter-Strike right now is that anyone can beat anyone. Shelve that for just a fucking moment. Just shelve that thought. Shelve that utter stupidity. For just a second. Let's also talk about something. Why was it decided as universally good that the winners of the major don't get to defend their titles? Why did we fucking agree that? That's mental. There's no reason for that. There's no justifiable reason. Oh, but with us only having two majors a year and them being six months apart, so what? So what? You should always come back. Imagine a World Cup without it. So that was a joke. No Virtus Pro because they can't qualify. A bunch of weird bullshit around that. After all the song and dance Blast made as well. Just to let you all know that we're letting the Russians back in now. Even though we said no Russians could play. Uh, but they will be called outsiders even though they're Armenian. They were still doing all of that. All of that embarrassment. Which is now over by the way. No one cares anymore. Isn't everyone so fucking played out with that nonsense. So I was, I was ahead of the curve on that one. There's not even the winners of the last major here, which makes way for another dog shit team. Then, man alive. Oh, hey, Richard, though. Maybe the RMRs just had some weird and wacky results, and that's how you end up with a fucked legend stage. Surely there's a ton of better teams in the challenges stage. Now, listen, I've joked about Monty on this stream before, being like a bit of a joke team. They're probably the best team in tier two. But I'll also add... When you have a format where people are playing best of ones, uh, does anything matter? No, the answer is no. The answer is no. But uh, Monty are the most in shape, play in all these cups, play all the time. They've got decent players. You know, they've picked up, you know, like guys like Boros and stuff like that. Monty are fucking legit, right? I've got no problem with them being the kings of tier two, right? That's fine. Pain. Rem pain. I mean, that's what I'm in. That's what I was in all throughout the RMRs. I mean, remember as well, this is how fucked... Well, I'm going to go through the each individual RMRs. Pain just got a fucking layup for this. They just got to play utter bums. They got to play evil geniuses, for fuck's sake. Then, Gamer Legion. <laughs> fucking 
stop. Forza, remember, Forza, unrelated to the RMR complaints, but just a team that just gets to have Luke Oil and all that shit, and everyone goes, yeah, it is a Russian oil company that's had traditionally ties to the state, but, I mean, you know, they're not Virtus Pro, are they? So, you know, <laughs> they're not Gambit, who we forced to sell their team, so that's fine, I guess. Uh, Apex. I love Steco, but come on. Apex are in. These are okay. Nip, OG, Ents, Mouse, Liquids, I suppose. They're all fine. Greyhound are there, guys. Great news. Yeah, the boys, people will type YTB. Complexity. Sorry, Messioso, but probably on the reflection. It's, you know, you're not really a major caliber team. Just saying. But, you know, uh, yeah, fine. The Mongols. <laughs> the fucking Mongols are there, boys. Formerly IHC, right? They've left their sponsor for some reason. Fluxo. And now, obviously, uh, FaZe, who completely shit the bed. And this, it's just going to be trash. And, of course, we still got best of one. We're still doing the same format at this major. So all of those fluke results and weird things that you get on a best of one, that's just going to happen again. I actually hope that some utterly terrible team wins. You know, I hope the last major is just like, and your major champions, bad news, eagles. And everyone's going, banks, 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 pushing the players out the way. Yeah, well, obviously, you know, my fucking training regime, yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's a fucking joke, guys. It's an app. This is a disgrace. What we've allowed to happen, and so let's just go through each of the RMRs because the problem isn't just that the format sucks, which it does. The format sucks, and the seeding sucks. We use the fucking blue ball system, and we're just stuck with this garbage. Like these are the results from the European RMR, right? So these were. Opening games, best of ones, right? Best of ones. You know, so you got like OG losing the game in Legion. I mean, OG aren't great. Would that happen in a best of three? Maybe. Maybe that's a borderline case. Bait beating Virtus Pro. Would they do 16 14 all the rounds, of course? Would that happen if that was a best of three? I don't know. But maybe that's a borderline case. Navi going to overtime with Into the Breach because for some reason. UK players and RV's Kryptonite. I think this happened in a previous tournament, didn't it? Where they played into the breach and it was overtime again. Overtime between Fnatic and Viperio. Dude, like what? So the best of ones right out the gate set off catastrophic events. Indeed, as we'll get to, one of the reasons Cloud9 are not at the major, and like, listen, I think they're bottle jobs. I love what Maui Snake says about Nafoni, all of that stuff. I love all that. I'd rather they were at the major than some of these teams, but here's the problem. They're not there because they lost the best of one to Monty. That's literally the reason. <laughs> like, if they don't lose that best of one, they're probably there in three, you know? It's fucking wild that that is the deciding factor. Okay, so there's just some examples there. We'll have a look at the, I mean, this is the America's RMR. Remember, because unfortunately for the Brazilian teams, they have to have the, the ignominy of playing fucking American teams right now, right? So let's have a look. Here we are. <laughs> I mean, I'm just laughing at Imperial Evil Geniuses. They managed to find a team EG could beat. We haven't even got to this. This is how, this is how much of a shit show. Evil Geniuses were in the RMR. Why were Evil Geniuses in the RMR? Evil Geniuses were in the RMR because the team that should have been in the RMR, Detonate, couldn't field a team for the RMR. And apparently Evil Geniuses were the next in line. So look, complexity. Like... Lose in the pain, but it's a best of one. Would that happen a best of three? Probably not. But not many upsets here. Everyone's bad. <laughs> Everyone's bad. It's terrible. I stayed up. I watched this. This is where we're at. Sorry to say this now, and do forgive me, because I know some of the people who run the org, and, you know, you know, I think you're cool. I tweeted about you, you know. But, like, this was a deciding fucking game. Liquid versus Nouns. Best of three. Nouns took a map. But anyway, that's got nothing to do with anything. That's just America's bad, right? That's that's all that is. Can't do much about that. That's fine. All right, okay. What about the Asian RMR? We all, we, there's, you know, that's good, right? Not really. The Rare Atom team, everyone was raving about. They don't get to go because they lost to the Mongols. 
on the last day. Again, full of best of ones. Let's have a look at the European RMRB. We're going to talk about all the problems with the Asian RMR in a moment. The Asian RMR was a fucking nightmare, as were a number of the RMRs. Uh, I'm just talking about the state of global Counter-Strike. There's a little warm-up before we get into that. But yes, here we are. You can see here, this was the other RMR. And again, this is what I'm talking about. So, Cloud9, you know, the best of one against Forza. There's that Monty one they lost to. Basically, by losing to that, they end up in this unreal chain of events. And let me just put it in into context for those of you that maybe don't understand. So, Cloud9 were the best team, sorry, fifth best team in the world. And they had to play the 14th best team in a best of one, the 32nd best team in a best of one, the 21st team in a best of three, the world's best team in a best of three, the ninth best team in a best of three, then go to the last chance qualifier where they have to play the 36th best team, the 19th best team, and then the second best team in the world, and they have to do this in the space of, like, fucking 48 hours because the second RMR was so close to the last chance qualifier. So they've done all that to not qualify. Apex, <laughs> who were the 31st best team in the world, had to play the 26th best team in a best of one, the second best team in a best of one, then the 20th, 50th, and 36th ranked team in a best of three to qualify. This is a joke. This is a sick joke. I have never seen a tournament where seeding just doesn't seem to matter whatsoever. Where where you are over the course of a year, where your world ranking is, doesn't play any meaningful role in whether or not you go to the world championships. It's a sick joke. There is no way Cloud9 should have a run like that. And there's no way any team in the top 20 should be having a harder time than any team outside of the top 20. I don't understand why everybody is jerking off about the prospect of having shit teams get lucky because of the boo call system with its ridiculous seedings that are done contextually within the tournament rather than everything that's gone before. People are going, oh, but it, it, it's it, why should the teams get special treatment? Because they've been better for longer. That's how it works in every sport. You don't just do a fucking reseed, like in the World Cup. You don't just say, well, right, okay, you've all qualified now, everybody equal. You know, like, no, not everybody equal. Here's another example, right? Fnatic. They get a legend spot because they beat Viperio, one win, and bait. Apex beat Game of Legion, Sprout, and Bait. That was that list I read you earlier. That's ridiculous. A legend spot for that. I've never seen it this bad. And obviously, it's exacerbated because for the last, like, however many months, probably talking about seven months now, the scene has been bad. Let's just do a little sidebar, as Thorin would say. Right, why is the scene bad? Why are these teams weak? Why do they fall in best of ones? Or why do they lose to lower opposition? It's because they're all in these fucking franchises leagues these pseudo franchise leagues where you just play endless low stakes games against teams that you know and play against regularly and it's making you soft because there's no competitive edge to it the only you, you only get up for the games that really really matter you're sealed off from new ideas new meta new styles and that is the problem. And coaches are telling me it's the problem. Players are telling me it's the problem. They don't know what these other teams do because there's no point in preparing for them because you only play them once in a blue moon. They're not going to be in fucking Pro League. They're not going to be on the blast circuit. It's not because fucking these tier two teams are so amazing. 
But it's like, I can watch a million Cloud9 demos, right? Like, a, a, against high-level opposition, where they're trying out new things, coming up with new strats. But I can go download those, right? How do I do that for fucking bait? <laughs> it's a joke. You've got, obviously, a really soft scene right now. I was totally right about that. Like, I know it's hard to watch, like, me keep doing a victory lap about that. There has never been a take so widely rejected that was so accurate as the scene is bad, and that's the only reason a mediocre G2 can appear so dominant. And let's just look at it. Isn't it right? Wasn't it, wasn't it on point? And we're all kind of slowly coming around to it right now. Apart from the morons that are going, no, but this is great. Actually, the scene is the strongest it is. Because even though the ceiling is lower, the floor is higher. And even though they aren't mutually exclusive, that means everyone's tier one. In fact, there is no tier two or tier three anymore. Isn't that amazing? No, it's not amazing. Because the Counter-Strike is ass. And we're going to get a dog shit world championship for it. Literally going to get like the worst mate you thought the gowler's show was gonna be bad this is gonna be way way worse guys this is gonna be so bad so just to underline the i was thinking about this because i was gonna do this like daft little review then one of the guys who does good work over at hl tv as i keep saying there is a handful of them you know they they're not all like that are they but there are some that are good. This article comes out. Valve's Swiss system, literally today, like serendipity, right? Valve's Swiss system under the microscope by Nero. He says it straight out of the gate. Now, Reddit would have a massive problem with this because they're idiots, okay? But what is the point of seeding? Its dictionary definition is to ensure that higher-ranked teams get an easier path throughout a tournament than lower-ranked ones. It is there to delay confrontation, to ensure the best teams meet as late in the competition as possible. You want the best two teams to play against each other in a final, not in a round of 16. That is the whole premise of a seeding. It is not to make a tournament like Oh, but like, let, it wouldn't it be nice if an underdog gets it? No, it wouldn't be nice. It'd be shit, actually, because generally they perform worse, right? Generally speaking. And to recognize that fact over the course of the year, they get a lower seeding. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. The only way to break the self-fulfilling prophecy of being a low seed is to get good and get consistent and become a high seed. It's how a lot of these competitions effectively regulate themselves. But according to Reddit, the best team should just win. Yeah, just win, guys. That's what it's all about. Just just win. Just beat everyone. It doesn't matter that Cloud9 had this unbelievable attritional slog of multiple best of threes that they should never have had to play as the fifth best team in the world right up until the very last day of the last chance qualifier where they have to fucking face Fizz second in the world at the time. So, some statistics, right? It talks about the boo call system. I call it the blue ball system, as you know, because it leaves you wanting more, doesn't it? <laughs> Leaves you wanting more. The blue ball system. It's integrated in a Valve Swiss format to act as a band aid and to self correct seeding as the tournament goes on. But it cannot fix the terminal damage inflicted by only using the last major and the RMRs for teams' initial seeding. That's the fundamental problem. That it doesn't matter that ESL has this incredible circuit. It doesn't matter that Blast has this incredible circuit and all these teams are part of it. They pay money to be part of it. But when it comes to the RMRs and the major, it's its own thing. You're only as good as the previous major and the previous cycle for this major. That's It's stupid. How do you ignore the entirety of of the CSGO calendar when seeding teams. It's so dumb. But that's what, we, that, that's what we've accepted. Dumb things we've accepted in CS. We've accepted that. We've accepted winners don't get to defend their crown. And the majors are inherently weaker because of it. You can see here that uh, there's some little charts... The new RMR system rewards high seeds less. Everyone thinks that's great. And this is a correlation between the initial seeding they get and their final placement. You can see here as well, we've just had Rio. That's probably the more up-to-date event we should be talking about, but it's just the same stuff, just to repeat. If the last event in Brazil, oh, where did the crowd go? <laughs> 
oh, they're cheating for Furia. It's like it's just, it's just like a fucking greatest hits album at this point. Like, it's best of the Beatles. There's no fucking point in talking about it. Anyway, you can see here the correlation between the initial seed and the final placement. All over the place right now. This little paragraph I'll read to you as well. A goal of any group stage is to ensure the highest quality playoffs possible. CSGO, like any sport, is a spectacle. We want to see the best teams face each other as late as possible into a tournament. When the stakes are highest and the arenas are packed, that is a reasonable view to hold both for fans and the TOs who are building their formats. This system clearly is not doing so. It relies on too small a sample of games from the RMRs or an outdated sample from the previous major. Too much happens in six months for teams to deserve to be seeded based on their performance in the last cycle. So everyone's agreed this is bad. I feel like I was again a lone voice in the wilderness saying this is bad. I think even now people are still justifying it. They think it's just like salty phase fans. I'm not a fan of any team. I've got no dog in the fight. I just want a good major. We're getting a bad major. The last CSGO major is that. It sucks. And so the proposed solution here, many uh, just want to return to the more effective seeding systems of the past. Using any world ranking, whether HLTVs, ESLs or Valves, would result in a much more favourable matchup for teams that are performing the best outside of the major circuit. I don't know why there's a reluctance to not just do what we've done since the start of CS Go. And that is to just de facto recognise HLTV as just being the curators of that. I don't always agree with their ranking. I don't always agree with the mathematical way in which it's calculated or whatever. I also think that the HLTV rating isn't a particularly good metric, particularly in this meta. Yes, I saw all the debate about Leetify. Leetify is an infinitely better measurement. But the problem is HLTV aggressively have positioned themselves as being kind of the dominant force, right? They're the ones who have all of the fucking, you know, they're on every server, they're pulling all the data in real time. There's nothing else. It's what we have. Right? It's what we have. HLTV is the barometer of success. We used to invite teams to tournaments on the basis of HLTV ranking. Just flat out, we're going to invite the top 10 teams. Right, well, who were the top 10 teams? Now, it might change in a week. We all sat there jerking off during COVID, even though it was all landlocked online Counter-Strike. And then people are going, but Richard, look, JKS got into the top 20. Yeah, brilliant. He played the fucking Shanghai tournament, that, that, or whatever it was, like fucking IEM Kwaidan or something. Something that wasn't even in fucking <laughs> the country it was online great yeah let's not write off that fucking year well you have yeah exactly i am beijing europe what's that absolute clown fest but you know we all agreed then it was good right because you all got what you wanted the bottom line is hltv has always been the, the way to go <laughs> valve aren't going to make their own ranking they don't want to they just want to cream off as much money from everything that they do and give you just enough of a positive experience to keep you around esl's world rankings are a joke and are ideologically compromised because it's ESL, and it's only a matter of time before a Saudi team mysteriously is in the top five. So, it's got to be HLTV. There's no one else, right? So, I don't know why we just don't do that. It is the yardstick we've used for 10 years of the game. But no, it's what you do with the last major, unless you're the winner, in which case, go fuck yourself. Imagine that. Imagine that being a rule. What you do with the last major dictates your seeding for the fucking qualifiers for the next major, unless you win it, in which case, fuck you, you're in the qualifiers anyway. Lord, help me. What have we done to our game? Shit. So there was all of that, right? And I'm, I'm going to just say this. I think we've managed to somehow concoct the worst system imaginable. Like, actually the worst system imaginable. The format is garbage. Best of ones should not exist in elite-level Counter-Strike. If you're doing a community tournament, or you're doing an amateur tournament, whatever, that's fine. Do your best of ones. But top-tier Counter-Strike, best of threes only, please. Best of threes only. And there's no excuse for it. Like, people are saying, 
oh, yeah, but, you know, we, we're limited for time. Do you know why you're limited for time? Because somewhere along the line, we agreed a bunch of things that I don't even know are necessarily are true. We agreed, oh, you know, the, the, we, we can't have two best of threes in a day anymore for teams. And then, by the way, tournament organizers bend that rule whenever their schedule gets out of whack and no one complains about it. So which is it? Is it impossible to do? Is it bad to do? I remember when we, we did a league one time and it was like one team were going to have to play two best of threes in a day. And I think the Brazilians lost the coin toss and it was does this happen it was the classic victim complex and it's like guys i'm from a time when you played like nine best of threes in a fucking day you started at 9 a.m and you grinded until 2 a.m and then you got up and you did it again and now we're saying oh it's impossible to play two best of threes meanwhile we'll have a best of five final that lasts eight hours and everyone goes yeah best of fives are wicked aren't they so which is it fucking decide guys we absolutely could have a good format if you would be willing to play two best of threes in a day just saying okay but fine that's impossible. Well, in that case, why are all... I don't know. Maybe we just have to have less teams competing in the fucking circuit. Do you want to know when it worked? I'll tell you when it worked. It worked when, over the course of the year, you earned points towards the major. And the RMR wasn't a tournament. The RMR was a ranking. It was a league table. That's what RMR stands for. Ranking. <laughs> it is a ranking regional major ranking that's when it was good you played in multiple tournaments you earned points based on your finishes over a six month period and then everybody knew going into the last tournament holy shit if we don't win it we can't qualify it created narrative tension build up it was actually good it was a good system i don't know why we moved away from that to do this clusterfuck. It's so dumb. So I have no idea. No idea why we're doing this reset. Bump, bump, bump. But, and, and, and so we come into these tournaments. Right, well, you're in the RMRs now. All the seedings reset. Seedings reset between each round. Everyone's playing everyone. There's no rhyme or reason to it. You can beat three dog shit teams and be legends. You can play the top three teams in the world and not even get to the major. Fuck you. It's stupid. The whole thing is stupid. It's got to stop. For CS2, we need a hard reset of this system. Because you are never going to get a world championship that feels like a world championship with the system we have. Boo calls is a joke. I don't even know when that crept in. The current RMR is a joke. Best of ones are a joke. We're doing best of ones at the tournament itself. It's it, it, These things... All play to worst teams. Anybody can fluke a best of one. Fluking a best of three, that's harder. Fluking multiple best of threes is hard. It's got to go. And as I said, I watched the RMR. I'm sure you all did too. Fucking hell, the standard was terrible, wasn't it? Wasn't the standard terrible? Absolute garbage. But that's just the standard of Counter-Strike. Now, you will remember as well, I made a massive fuss about when we had the CIS RMR and Akuma just cheated in it. Allegedly, in a fucking video game in Minecraft, I don't know. You remember that? You remember when all their players were just looking at something up here? That definitely wasn't like a fucking stream of the team they were playing. Allegedly, in a video game in Minecraft. And I said, like, there's absolutely no way that that result can stand in the face of it, you know, just being so obvious. But the problem was, everybody was waiting for fucking E-Sick. <laughs> so when you're waiting for E-Sick, you may as well be waiting for the fucking rapture, you know. Damn you, E-Sick, please. So that was bad. They should have, again, they should have completely redone that tournament without Akuma in it. That was the only way that it could be fair. But we haven't even got time for... In competitive integrity anymore in esports we actually don't care about it we say we do we say we care about a lot of things in esports don't we? we care about the players don't we not except uh, no back to the acid mines for you 12 hours a day grind for the sponsors you know, we don't care no one gives a fuck about anything in this business but this was outrageous <laughs> it's like somebody said hey do you know what would be really fucking funny why don't we run a bunch of shit rmrs that are compromised from an integrity standpoint and richard lewis will burst a blood vessel and he'll have to have four weeks in bed we'll finally finish him off well done nice assassination attempt blast
Unbelievable. This is from my boy Nort. You know him, you love him. Regular on the stream. Blast TV Paris ma Major, Asia and America's RMRs, suffer from wealth of competitive integrity issues. A wealth of competitive... Not one, not two, a fucking wealth. A wealth of integrity issues. Oh, well, what's what's been going on here then? Let's have a look. So, the events in Ulaanbaatar, Mongolia, and Monterrey, Mexico have failed to meet the standards expected for top-tier events and those set by Valve's rulebook. Delays and technical issues plagued the first day of the Blast, Paris Major, Americas and Asia RMRs, but larger problems that compromise the competitive integrity of both tournaments have since come to light, according to information obtained by HLTV. Now, by the way, when they say delays and technical issues, the entire first day of the Asian RMR was gone. It was gone gone i haven't seen that happen since blast did their very first tournament where we just cancelled a day we just cancelled a day it's gone it was fully redeemed all your money gone all your rmr gone right but anyway what are these integrity issues let's start players had internet access during the asia rmr internet access <laughs> Now, for those that don't know about esports tournaments, one of the first things you will do when you are having a LAN tournament is you will make sure that the play area, the computers in the play area, don't have internet access. And you're going to go, why, Richard? I'm going to tell you why. Because obviously, you can have communication with the outside world. That's at the lower end. You can also get on the internet. <laughs> and I don't know. Well, I'll just download some fucking cheats. I'll just have my mate send me some cheats that I use in this World Championship tournament. Not a problem. <laughs> also, yeah, you're right, Tasty. Turns out local area network, you know, uh, kind of integral to the concept. But yeah, they had internet access. Now, I'm biased. One of my great concerns, by the way, about this wouldn't even necessarily be cheating. Uh, it would be people outside communicating what the betting odds were <laughs> for Asian teams. Uh, go down in the fifth. If you lose now, you will be millionaires. But whatever. Uh, HLTV was informed that the Asia RMR had some significant breaches of competitive integrity and rule violations. The most egregious being player PCs had internet access enabled while matches were live. Now, I hate to say this. You have to do the tournament again, guys. You have to do the tournament again. You cannot let this... Th this aggression will not stand, man. You cannot let people just have played this tournament in this environment who fucking knows what was going on anyway one source informed hltv that players allegedly had to ask to have it turned off but even after that they were still able to access steam friends and access the internet via steam friends so in other words, that's like if I send you a link, I can click on the link and it goes through. But if I click on anything else, I can't use it. So the networking admins didn't know what the fuck they were doing. A team attending the Asia RMR also independently confirmed to HLTV that there was internet access and that Steam was online for them. It should go without saying. But access to the internet during a professional match is a massive breach of integrity as players can receive or look up information from external sources as well as gain access to more nefarious means. Vax sucks having a field day. Also, it does clearly state in Valve's rulebook your servers have to conform to these standards for the tournament. Anyway, turns out Blast were unaware that players had internet access at the event in Mongolia, and they gave HLTV the following statement. There hasn't been any internet access during the games. These, This is a lie. <laughs> there was an issue during SSD setup that their network was not set up correct, allowing full access. But of this, all teams were made to redo their setup on new SSDs the following day. So there was access there hasn't been any internet access the network was not set up correct allowing full access i mean that's like got to be some sort of record for a pr contradiction right one fucking sentence blast like are you who what idiot wrote that for you what idiot couldn't even get through a paragraph 
Fucking hell. Then it goes on to say sources at the Americas RMR said there were similar situations that occurred uh, before they played, but it was caught by one of the teams towards the end of the setup and resolved before the event started. Uh, however, HL TV is aware that players still had internet access at the Asia RMR even after Blast provided their statement. Then, stage violations in Ulan Batar. Sounds like a fucking essay. By Hunter S. Thompson. Strange rumblings in <laughs> Ulan Bitar. HLTV also understands that the Asia RMR has had breaches of the stage integrity subsection of the Valve rulebook. Prim primarily in regard to coaches reacting and interacting during games outside of tactical timeouts. Valve has been extremely strict on this matter since the PGL Major Stockholm. So what this means is all of the coaches were like able to fist bump each other, high five, hug, do all the reactions we used to have back before every single coach, <laughs> bar like five, decided to cheat in Counter-Strike. And everyone said, oh, they've gone too far. They've gone too far, Valve. They're so ridiculous. You can't even make, like, eye contact with your player. You can't fist bump everyone. Like, listen, I'm going to just say this. <laughs> Controversial. Stop with all this fucking fist bump in every round. Fucking hell. You're in a game of Counter-Strike. It's not your partner going through labor. You don't need to be there holding their fucking hand every five minutes. Just stop. It's cringe. It's actually fucking cringe. Every single round, you do the same thing. You win the round, you scream, nice! And then you have an awkward wait for a fucking fist bump with everyone. And you do the same thing every round. Like, guys, it's fine. Like, it's fine. You know, when you're in the fucking team shabber with each other, you're flicking each other with the towels, you can fucking high five and fucking fist bump uh, as much as you want so sick of it it's embarrassing it's like you're trying to copy what real sports does there's no need for it but anyway let's not pretend that if there was a way a coach could fucking cheat <laughs> let's let's not pretend they wouldn't do it the proof's out there you all fucking use that bug if there was a way that you could have a stooge <laughs> You know, like you were some knockoff Darren Brown and you had a fucking stooge in the crowd. Uh, it's B, it's B, it's B. And you know, there was, doing this was B or doing that was fucking A. You'd be, you be, I'm just going to take a time out here. They're stuck in here, they're stuck in here. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, they're stuck in here, they're stuck in here. Let's not pretend you wouldn't find a fucking way to do it. So stage violations as well. Hate to say it, you broke the rules, you got to replay the tournament. We are looking into this, Blast said. If this did occur, we will investigate and give the coach a final warning for this interaction not to happen again during the RMRs. It is very clear this issue did occur with multiple stream clips showcasing players fist bumping their coaches and HLTV even capturing images of it happening. There you go, there's Ty Lu. They wouldn't do anything, would they? They'd never do anything, not Ty Lu. Imagine running a tournament that's fucking filmed it's not like a tournament that happened in the dark, all the lights off, no one there, and you go, yeah, we're going to check this. There you go. I've checked it, guys. It took me a second. It's happening there. Look, it's Ty Lu. Right there. Your tournament, by the way. This is a classic. The incorrect rule sets were applied for live matches. What do you mean? Well... <laughs> The Asia RMR was a mess. It's the Asia RMR again. The Asia RMR also suffered from incorrect in-game rule sets, applying different timeout standards and post-round time, again, not in line with the section of Valve's rulebook regarding server configurations. I'm just going to see if this was in the thing or was something we talked about. Remember when I said about the America's RMR, and I think it was the, it wasn't the RMR, but it was the qualifier for the RMR. And they were doing knife rounds. And it's like, no, you just, there's like a coin toss and you pick side, you, you pick map, I pick side. There's no knife round. And they were doing knife rounds because no one read the rules. No, I expect that from North Americans, <laughs> not reading the rules. Because Americans are used to thinking the rules don't apply to them anyway. But I expect better in an Asian RMR. So anyway, they didn't apply the right rules. So what, what, what rules were wrong? Well... Uh, timeouts were initially 60 seconds instead of 30. So they just had 60-second timeouts, right? Great. And 
post round time was set to seven seconds instead of five, making it possible for players to die in situations where they would have would have otherwise safely survived to the following round. And again, they've got some clips of it. But like basically, obviously, if there's an additional extra seconds and you're trying to save a gun and you're being hunted, well, you've got two extra seconds to get murked. Right? Blast said. <laughs> They addressed the timeout error shortly after it was noticed. It is unclear when exactly the post-round time was fixed, but it is now also in line with the standards set by Valve. The timeout issue initially occurred due to the server issues, but was instantly flagged by Armin. So instant, there's multiple examples of it impacting on people in-game. Blast said in their statement to HLTV, the settings were amended to 30 seconds and dealt with to avoid any further similar issues recurring. Now, I remember when this happened. It was in Columbus, in the minor component of that major in 2016. And I remember it fucking affected Splice because it was when we just changed the bomb timer rules. And I remember fucking Marty, the owner of Splice, was apoplectic because they lost like a close game. Might have been 16 14 or something. And it went down because of the fucking bomb timer in the last round. And they realized the bomb timer was wrong. And they wanted to replay the whole game. And I said, but it was the same for both teams. It was one map, you know, whatever. You got to let it go. Now, if that had applied for an entire fucking tournament, I might have actually been open to the idea of replaying it. It wasn't. It was like one game. But that's the only other time I've seen this sort of level of incompetence. And to call it incompetence, somebody ran an old config over running the new official config. Then, malfunctioning headsets in America. The America's RMR suffered from its own set of competitive integrity breaches. Power outages on the first day of the event led to network connectivity issues, delaying the start of matches for nearly two hours. And from there, the situation only spiralled. A massive worker strike in Germany led to shipping delays for the soundproof headsets and servers that Liga Ace planned to use for the event causing them to scramble for a solution with local servers, HyperX headsets, and changing the player area to account for a lack of soundproof headphones. Multiple coaches informed HLTV and Dust2.com.br that their headsets and microphones were not functional, and they were instead forced to talk through players' headsets. Or had players relay messages to the rest of the team after they took off their headsets to listen to their coaches. This remained an issue even on Friday, as evidenced below. There's a picture of it. Look at this. That's a coach talking through a player headset to tell his team what to do. Nice and cosy. On other occasions, coaches were entirely unable to communicate with their players at all. And on at least one occasion, an admin prevented a coach from talking to their team due to thinking it was a technical timeout, wasting the majority of the coach's time to talk. <laughs> Imagine calling a tactical timeout and some fucking admin is telling you you can't talk because it's a technical timeout. No, it's not. I just called it. It's clearly tactical. No, it's not. It's just technical. Okay, I'm wrong. It is tactical. Say your shit. Go off, King. Oh, the round's starting. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. These are qualifiers for the World Championship, guys. This is the pinnacle of Counter-Strike right here. Do you understand how busted this dog shit scene is? Multiple coaches also informed HLTV that they believe to have free control of the mute and unmute function of their microphones through their headsets on the first day of the tournament. You can see there's a quote here from Gwery. My headphone was muted like it was cutting their voice. So one time I just muted and take off my headphone and tell the admin I couldn't hear anything. So it doesn't make sense. I'm wearing the headphone. So he's saying that they had control of the mute. Right? Beep, beep, beep. Don't worry. Blast explained it. They said TeamSpeak on Thursday had to be manually, ma manually managed by our League Ops team on the ground due to some issues on the america's headsets this is news to us 
Those headsets are brand new, and we have an automated mic system that allows coaches to speak to players during timeouts, but we will look into this further. As the team speak had to be manually managed on the first day of the tournament, it is possible that coaches could have communicated with players outside of tactical timeouts if they indeed had full control of the mute and unmute functions of their microphones. However, HLTV has not had any confirmation over whether any communication of that sort took place. So that's just sound. Basically, it was just like the old days. You just had a coach like, just shouting all the time. Could have just done that. Right. On it goes. Miscommunication from Blast allows unregistered coaches to stand behind teams. Shortly after the first matches at the America's RMR, Dust2 US reported that Team 1 CEO Alexandra Cacavel Perez, I'm sure it's pronounced something better like Cacavel or something, but I'm calling him Cacavel. Right? He was not registered on his team's roster and therefore ineligible to stand behind them as a coach. The Brazilian team had parted ways with Peacemaker ahead of the tournament and announced their intention to field the CEO as his replacement during the tournament and did so in the opening match. So this guy hasn't officially registered, just gets to stand behind his team. Just a random dude stood behind his team. Paqueta also opted for a last-minute replacement by asking Bruno Rivas or Rivetti to stand behind them after their coach, Zhao Rai Rai, was sidelined due to a medical emergency before the event and again were able to field him for the first match. Both teams received emails from Blast that authorised the purchase of tickets and accommodations for the two members, but were ambiguous in their language as to whether they'd officially been registered as substitutes in the lineup. The tournament organiser later ruled both members were ineligible to stand behind their teams, but that they would not be penalised as it was not an intentional breach of the rules. So, Blast couldn't even accurately communicate whether or not their coaches were registered. Even with this issue coming to light in the, in the Americas, it appears Blast and Mesa made an identical error at the Asia RMR. Why not? By allowing Eruption to use Kurt's be strong Art said as their coach, uh, despite bold NCL bats being registered on their official roster. All in all, the compounded issues across the two regions has given teams, players and fans an extremely subpar experience for the qualifying stage of the last CSGO major and discontent with the situation overall has been clearly visible among teams at the America's RMR. Prolonged tech delays at both the America's and Asia RMRs have also added to that frustration, with the most recent day in Mongolia not concluding until 3 a.m. after a six-hour match between Tai Lu and Rare Atom. Remember, remember the rules about, you know, no, no games after midnight? Yeah, we, no one's cared about that for ages. <laughs> Six-hour match. <laughs> between Tai Lu and Rare Atom. Just have fun. Communicating with the outside world all the while. Allegedly in Minecraft. So, I think it's fair to say the RMRs were a disaster. The the lesser RMRs, lesser. Remember, remember, these are regions in the world. I mean, I did see on Reddit, I did see some people going, it's only the Asian RMR. Oh, yeah, that massive market we hope to crack one day. Now that CS2's here. And now that interesting Counter-Strike is on the rise. Yeah, 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 let's do a terrible job for the World Championships, good call. What about America, you know? Brazil, huge audience, don't know if you know that. Be good, right? Be good for the viewing numbers. Lots of fans out there. Oh, yeah, okay, well, we'll just do a terrible job for the World Championships. We'll just isolate ourselves from Brazil as well, shall we? Yeah, not a problem. Like, Gwery just gets unbanned, he's back. Now he's embroiled in a mute-unmute scandal. This poor kid's probably walking on eggshells. So, that was a disaster. Now... <laughs> now why don't we get to stupid reddit opinions because loads of people complained about the broadcast loads of people complained about the casters but first don't know if you saw it there was a racism scandal right in the middle of the rmrs oh yeah oh question marks in the chat what's this richard well here we are i'm sad to tell you about the huge racism scandal that, that you missed and clearly don't care about. But I'm woke Richard Lewis. I'm the wokey choker. I do care. And so here it was. Aurora, the team, 
were playing against Eternal Fire in the European RMRs. And they were consulting their strat sheet. And someone zoomed in on the strat sheet. And what was on the strat sheet? It was a picture of a kebab. That right there is a donna kebab. It's a, them elephant legs that they have. You've seen them. You've seen them in the kebab shop. And it's on a spike and it spins and it's round a radiator that barely cooks it. And then, you, and then Sparta comes in and goes, that looks safe. I'll have one of them, please. And then goes, oh, I've got diarrhea for the tenth time this month. Uh, how is it possible? You've seen them, and and trust me, by the way, there is nothing better at three a.m. when you're arsehole drunk. But you will always, you know. I I gotta say this in retrospect. I there's probably never been a doner kebab, a three a.m. doner kebab. It's its own thing, right? I'm not impugning all kebabs. There's some lovely kebab, but a three a.m. doner kebab. I've probably regretted every single one. If we're just being real about it. Uh, but anyway, th there it is. If you squint. Reddit noticed it, and uh, <laughs> the Turk, the Eternal Fire fans. Now, I don't know if you remember Turkish fans. They're not quite as victim complexory in CSGO as the Brazilian fans, obviously. They're, they're, the Brazilian fans really are gold medalists at that. But if you remember when Fnatic played Space Soldiers and Golden picked up an auto-sniper, because they were winning and hit them with the dak 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 dak. He was he got death threats over that. Go look up those by the numbers episodes. It's preserved for all time. Anyway, they got upset over it. <laughs> they got upset over the the elephant leg. And Aurora had to come out and they <laughs> they did a statement. There is nothing I would like to show you more than some of these replies. <laughs> but I'm scared because <laughs> there's some bad ones on there. I will not be showing you the reply. Well, let's just read the statement and we'll just have a giggle and then we'll move on. The esports organization Aurora condemns any expression of racism, xenophobia, or other forms of hatred against anyone. The person involved is fined. The full amount of the fine will be transferred to the Turkish philanthropy funds helping the victims of the earthquake. We deeply regret and apologize for this situation. Now, I'll read you some of the responses from Turkish fans to this apology for the elephant leg on the piece of paper. This is the top one. I am waiting to write easy, go kill yourself at the end of the match when you are eliminated. That's the top. That's the top answer. And I hate to say it, guys. He didn't say in a video game in Minecraft. Your disrespectful behavior towards Turkey reveals what a disrespectful and disgraceful club you are. You're all racists. Racists. This is from someone with the Turkish flag in their profile. There is something called shame. Respect. Respect. Racist. Racists. Racists. Racist. These are all separate. I'm not. I, I, I'm just. I'm not just stuck in a loop. Then back to racist. Shame on you. This. Again, from someone with a Turkish flag in their account called uh, Kanzu. This is ridiculous. How do you not pay attention to this? There's no point in apologizing after you've done it. Which, of course, fundamentally shows a lack of understanding about the concept of apology. Because it is impossible to apologize for something you, you didn't do. But any, anyway, don't you check these papers... When I had fun and then got a reaction, I sorry, this is bullshit. Guys, <laughs> win or lose is doesn't matter. But why are you doing racism? Who are you? Just useless no-namer dogs. Next time, learn how you can sportsmanship like a professional. Strong uptake, uptake for dogs all of a sudden. Shame on you racist dogs next. Uh... <laughs> Disgusting human beings. I wish you the worst on final game. You lose anyways. You fucking racists. Racist dog team. I hope the person who did it die in pain. Fuck your team. Then from... <laughs> so many umlauts. Uh, you are fucked, racist idiots. If you continue to racist Turks, the result will be bad. Fucking idiot. So, you know, got a point. 
Anyway, so we had we had some fun there, didn't we? We had some fun. <laughs> Vitriolic hatred over a kebab. I don't know. Seemed a bit. Maybe I've missed the point. It seems a bit over the top to me. But what do I know? What else went on? Well, we also had moronic opinions uh, about the broadcast. Now, the broadcast had some problems, didn't it? I'm not saying Reddit is a hive mind populated by idiots. Uh, But you have to wonder sometimes, don't you? Because recently, I think during the RMRs, uh, Simple said, didn't he? Simple Obviously, every opinion he holds is uh, is accurate. Simple said, casters and analysts don't understand Counter-Strike. Only pro players do. Uh, and I've listened to them, and it blows my mind that they don't understand anything about the game. Which is interesting, really. Because, you know, a lot of the analysts now are ex-pros. So, like, I don't know. Like, is it like being a fucking synth at the Institute? <laughs> like, one dr- right, I'm retired now. They just fucking erase your fucking memory of, of, of how to be a pro player. It's actually staggering. And, and the thing is as well, look, I got no beef with Simmel. Like, I, I like Simmel, you know, I mean, look, whatever. He, he's, a good, he's a good kid and he's, you know, he fucking means well. Just opens his mouth. I mean, shit, man, everyone does it. When you're a superstar, it's hard to fucking conceive of just how much what you say will carry weight, you know. And as I've got a little bit older, I'm kind of a bit more forgiving towards it because it's happened to me and i'm nowhere near as big as these people but i've said something it's gone viral and suddenly you're always kind of having to explain it you know i think when fallen essentially accused leaf of aimbotting i don't think he realized it was going to blow up and be a massive deal because when you're that person you don't think i am i'm huge i'm like a massive so you're just a dude like trapped inside your head living your life you know so you can sort of forgive him, but the problem is it does carry weight, it does resonate. And all over the RMR, there was tons of people talking about how casters don't uh, don't fucking understand the game and how they weren't talking about anything. And I, I saw this thread, this is sort of indicative of a general tone that was happening over the course of the RMRs. Here it is, right? So Hades destroyed Zewu and Munazi at the RMR. No caster highlighted this, so I have to point it out. The premise of the post is that Hades, who did do very, uh, did do statistically well at the RMR, but the premise of this is that he- no caster mentioned Hades having a good game, uh, which is interesting because. When I went and looked at the clips from the games he played, I found evidence to the contrary. Just listen to this clip. You only need to listen to it. You don't need to see it, right? Zywoo does his best to get away with something in that ridiculous position. But it's not enough to make Vitality feel comfortable. Oh, Dupree moves in, wins the fight versus Kylo and leaves Hades alone. It's flicked down. What a shot on Dupree. Now it's just Spinks. Hades wins the clutch! What a god! Of death here on Anubis. So he said, he said, what a god. He called him a god. (laughs) So he has acknowledged that he's had a good game, right? But apparently, anyway, back, back to this. The premise is that nobody said anything good about Hades the entire time. No caster highlighted how good he was doing, even in the game where he was destroying Zewu. And so this guy... Uh, had to point it out. Uh, and then there were some comments. Here it is, right? I am super frustrated with casting. All of it, right? All of it. Hades predicted a boost on the last round of the Vitality game. And casters were like, it was given up on a platter. I so miss Moses and the original crew. Now, there's a lot going on in that comment. So, first of all, he hates all casters. Now, he's super frustrated with all of them. And he misses Moses. Moses is still here. <laughs> Moses is still here like he's one of the active ones like Moses is still there like he's still at events he does it all like he might not have done this this game so anyway basically I won't even get into the it was given on a platter like there's two ways to conceive of something like, if you do a boost and someone predicts it and you get taken down, yeah, it's a good prediction, but also, you know, you've done a little peekaboo and got your head blown off. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you get criticised for doing that, you know? Because the kill is given on a platter in that instance. Yeah, it's, it's given on a platter because of the predictive work. It's not like the worst thing you've ever heard. The casters at this RMR are just so inexperienced. 
They point out the obvious and can't read the game very well. Now, remember, one of my fundamental grievances with when Reddit users talk about how casters don't know the game very well. So, again, let's just dive into it, all right? Because I'm not a moron, right? These are the words of a moron. I'm not a moron. I'm going to drop some incredible... Unbelievable, something to think about here. So, a caster, who presumably has also been a player for a long period of time, you know, not all casters are amazing players, but they play the game much like ordinary people, and they just so happen to do commentary. So, and obviously, because they do commentary, they watch probably more Counter-Strike than the average person because it's their livelihood, especially if they're aspiring casters, because not only do they watch all the shit you watch, because they have to stay current in case they get called up to the bigs, they're very often doing commentary in the fucking small leagues, in the cash cups, in all these fucking terrible low-level leagues and low-level one-night cups and all of that, because they want to get good at it and they want to get a job and they want to get up to the S tier. They want to be in the elite division. So presumably they even watch more Counter-Strike and they're playing the Counter-Strike as well. They don't understand the game and can't read it very well. But a Redditor who presumably like on average is like Golden Over 2... They do know the game. And they also not only know the game better than the casters, they know casting better than the casters. And yet every time I've encountered one of these guys, they can't even articulate a sentence and they get nervous and they look at their shoes. You know, they can't handle confrontation being put on the spot. Well, what do you think? Now's your time to shine. Spotlight on. Let's hear your amazing opinion. No, they can't. It's incredible. So I always say to people, ask them, when you see these dickheads on Reddit and they go, yeah, they don't even know the game very well. How do you know? How do you know? What's your level of expertise? None. Okay, what, how, so how the fuck do you, how are you in a position to critique somebody when you don't know, you don't know what you're talking about either? So even if you're right and, and these casters don't know what they're doing, you never know. What you mean is you don't like the caster. I don't like their voice. I didn't like the thing they said. They weren't biased enough to the team I like. Keep your criticism honest because you're not smart enough. You're not intelligent. You've got no e expertise in this field. You're just a cretin who is allowed to have an opinion because sometime... Since the turn of the century, we decided giving cretins tools to articulate opinions is absolutely fine. Have at it. All opinions are equal. All opinions matter. And we've sat and watched society slip into a swamp as a result of that. And we all just go, yeah, but what are you going to do? How about we push back on morons saying dumb things? Like, just a fucking thought. And yeah, absolutely right. These are the same people going, these casters don't know what they're talking about. These are the same casters. Semler doesn't know what he's talking about. Semler's a traitor. Pansy doesn't know what she's talking about. Pansy sounds like a boy. These are the people that drive out all the cats. They're doing it to Anders right now. Anders does fake hype. Dinko doesn't know what he's talking about. Fuck me. Why? Guys. Just a suggestion moving forward, which I know you're incapable of doing. But if something bothers you so much, do what I did. When I got eSports journalists sucked, you know what I did? I started typing, started going to events, became the greatest of all time. That's what I did. When I thought hosts weren't really, you know, there was like a void. You could probably get some good, you know, some good hosting in there. Different style, different. I just went and did it. I jumped from journalism into doing that. Got on telly. I don't know, guys. Maybe if you have the talent that you fucking think you do, you can go and do the things and be the person that replaces these people. Oh, that's right. You can't because you've got no fucking talent, no fucking brains. What you have is a Reddit account. Shut the fuck up. Fucking joke. A caster nerf wasn't what I, what I expected in 2023. Finally, someone said it. Yeah, no one ever criticizes casters on Reddit. No one ever criticizes commentators. Let's check in again. Somebody corrected him and said it was round 26. You actually think with the smoke covering backside plus street that the boost wasn't obvious. Like the smoke was out of place too. You can see why Hades didn't clear it at the same uh, at the same at round 19. I keep forgetting people are legit silvers here. I like you, 400 Burka. Right, good. Then the same guy you just pointed out, he knows the game better than the casters, and the casters are bad. Good casters give credit to players while calling out BS without bringing down players. That's not a rule! That's something you made up! 
That's your fucking anime brain. I promise you, nowhere in the sports broadcast handbook does it say, please consider player feelings. It's not there, mate. It doesn't exist. It's never existed. I have literally seen commentators ridicule someone. I've seen commentators ridicule someone, and then it turned out the player they were ridiculing was, like, injured. What was he called? Think about our man. He's in fucking Newcastle now. Karayas, the fucking goalkeeper. Tried to play on with a concussion, ended his whole career. With the commentators going, oh, he looks dizzy. Ooh. It's, uh, I guess that was a powerful shot that bounced off his hands. No, they didn't say that. He said he's had a fucking nightmare. He said he's having a meltdown. And he got kneed in the fucking head. This is sports. Fuck your feelings. Fuck anyone's feelings. All that matters is there are winners and there are losers. And there is the great drama that builds up from competition. That's all it is. That's all that matters. Hades as one of the best matches of his life where he was literally dominating everyone, and if the caster says Hades didn't have to do anything for the first kill, what does that mean? Right. So, by the way, also now, new rule of casting according to Reddit, if a player is having the game of their life, you have to fucking stop any narrative you've constructed talking about anything else and you just have to say like well he's having a game of his life here he's amazing isn't he i think we'll make the whole i think we'll make the whole broadcast i think we'll make the whole cast just about this one individual player because he's having a really good game he doesn't always have good games does he hades he's not known for it but he, you know he's had a tough time but he did have some good games back in the day but this is the game of his life in fact you know what i i just want to say that if i was dating hades right now i would i would just i would just i'd give him the blowy of his life as well because he's earned it he's absolutely earned it having a game like this jim what do you think jim oh yeah he's well, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Like, it's a fucking game of Counter Strike at the end of the day, and he's he's done good, well done. Like, fuck me. Like, what happened to Moses? <laughs> he was casting the American RMR. What happened to Moses? He was on the other one. He was just, he was literally doing it. He was just doing a tournament. I even muted the stream. A classic. The casting has been quite underwhelming. Not gonna lie, which is logic. Because that's what happens when you have unexperienced people taking the job. It's a skill and it's take time to build it. Making mistakes is how you fix them to become better. But yeah, the casting is a bit off when they call intended and demo review kills luck. And just overall not talking enough about what's happening or building storyline or anything. We're quite lucky to have the usual casting talents like Sponge Machine, Harry Hugo, Launders, etc., etc., that know how to hype a game. Oh, yeah, you never criticise those guys for doing a bad job. You never criticise Launders for not being hype enough, do you? Nah, that's not a lazy narrative. No shit. The casters are as bad as EG. Bit strong, that one. I've noticed one of the casters talks like he's pandering to the HLTV users because he only repeats the daily HLTV threads about players and teams. Zero original thinking. That's why posts like these are good, my guy, because the casting is super frustrating at times. So, drop some my guy as well. Nice theory, of course, that there's just a caster out there. I don't even know which one he's talking about, but there's a caster out there who goes, oh my God, I've got to prepare for the big game. It's the RMRs. How am I ever going to get a chance to do like an S tier tournament? Quick, quick, I'll go on HLTV. Uh, what are the users on HLTV saying? All of them sub 80 IQ. Let's see. NA fans, come. Right, okay, yeah, yeah. I guess NA fans do come, don't they? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what happened after die? Well, what does happen after die? Bloody hell, don't it? Fuck me. It's not even real, is it? No one no one does that. This one didn't do as well, but it was still made. So I'm going to comment it. I've never skipped watching so many games because of casters, said Swamp Harbor. Who the hell hired these people as casters? That would be Blast, the people running the tournament. Some have grating voices that aren't remotely close to caster tier. <laughs> Some are unable to properly enunciate words and sound slurred half the time. I really hope it's just the cheap option for the RMR and the pros will arrive soon. Giving new people a chance is a good thing. To which he replies, I agree. <laughs> 
I don't know, Swamp Harbour, mate. Your thread saying that it's bad that new people are getting a go sort of makes me think you don't agree. But I don't know. It's hard to really keep up with your own thoughts, isn't it? But the simple truth is that not everyone is born to cast. Not everyone has the voice, enunciation, and quick thinking of a pro caster. Also, I don't think that the final CSGO major is the place to chuck in mediocre talent to give them a chance. Which, of course, that never happened because uh, this isn't the major. The casters are just fine. It's funny how people can only respond with, they're fine, without giving any actual counter-arguments as to how grating accents vocal fry and slurred speech is okay for and again these are all things that he's it, it's in his brain like he just doesn't vibe with the voice same way some people can't understand some accent and we're gonna get to that in a second. so there was that casters can't even cast then <laughs> this is so good imagine having the nerve to criticize british accent some of the wacky European accents that are out there. Do you know what I mean, right? But that's what happened. So here it is. I can't understand the other cast a properly sad face. I don't want to be mean or toxic. Just wanted to point out that English is not my native language. But I've always been able to understand most of the prime casters. But I barely understand what this guy is saying. In this clip, I can understand maybe half of what he's saying. Maybe if he talked slower... I don't know. Again, I don't think he's a bad caster. I just can't understand him. <laughs> Which would make you a bad caster, by definition. Now, the clip. A lot of time left, a classic VP round, and it doesn't work out for them. Yeah, Ona, I think for him, really making a different step and up, isolating the fight brilliantly too. I mean, especially in that kind of copy position, which is, of course, now being nerfed in a way where you can't just hide there, you can't just park over the corner. He was, a shoulder will still be showing, but Jame overlooks the angle, doesn't clear it properly. We are starting to see Bate put a fight up in the latter stages here of regulation. Who knows? We've already seen, technically speaking, four OTs today. We could see another one under to the table. <laughs> It's so inscrutable! What's he saying? <laughs> That's so mental! It wasn't even fast. This guy made a thread about it. It's ridiculous. It's just absolute nonsense the whole time. On Reddit, it's nonsense. <laughs> and everyone's guessing the accent. Irish. Sounds Irish. <laughs> it's not. It's like when people say foreign Scottish. He's not. He's just got a thick... Northern accent, mate. South African, if I had to guess. You're smoking the Durban poison brew. I don't even know I'm a Scottish. I can't do South African. It's been too long. But anyway, what the fuck is that? Like, it's just ridiculous. Like, it's nonsense. Anyway, nonsense. Then we got the greatest. The, the thread everybody wants. The passive-aggressive thread. If you're a new caster coming through, this is what you want to read in the middle of the RMR, isn't it? <laughs> like Blazing Saddles. Hi there. Where are all the OG casters at? Where are the OG casters at? Well, yeah, it's a good question, I guess. Henry G and Sadakist. DDK and Bardolf. Pansy and Machine. Mega Man. These are all amazing casters. I wish to see them at the Major. D-Man CSGO <laughs> was amazing as well. Check out Cologne's 2015 final. Now, let's be real. This has to be D-Man's alt or something. <laughs> has, uh, no one remembers him fondly in Counter-Strike. Come on. Come on. And how's he an OG cast? He's a fucking league cast. What do you mean OG? OG how? What are you talking about? In what way is he OG? So people then, because this, this is like a red rag to an edu educationally subnormal bull. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Basically what this is, is what most people think the title to that is. Why not post why you hate certain people that work in CSGO? That's what that says. Now, you, you probably think it doesn't say that, but it does say that. It does say that. It says that quite clearly, if you look. It says, why not post this wild speculation about people you've never met? That's what it says. No, it doesn't, Richard. Well, let's see. Let's, 
Let's check. Um, so, last year, around Pro League, Sadakist was given the opportunity to cast again. He was doing great until he got drunk and had a fight, created a big ruckus, and was immediately fired. Now, first of all, Sadakist wasn't given an opportunity to cast again. He'd been casting for ages. It wasn't Pro League. It was Rio. He didn't get into a fight. He threw a frisbee at someone, which did create a big ruckus. And he wasn't immediately fired because he'd worked the event. He just was then said, yeah, you probably should sit the rest out because of the frisbee. People then argue about facts they have no idea about because it's Reddit. Someone comes in and goes, it was the Rio Major. Wasn't it Cologne? What the fuck are you like? Who are you? You clearly don't know what you're talking about. Why have you bothered posting, you fucking... It's a G-tard. There you go. Of course it is. Of course he's got G2 flair. What can you do? Like, what are you going to do? It's the G2 fans with their fucking informed opinions about Counter-Strike. Here they come. And look at that. Wasn't it Cologne? No, it was the Rio Major. Oh, yeah, that's right. What, your memory got jogged in the space of that exchange? He's the type of person you could honestly, like, got your nose, he'd follow you around for ages. Can I my nose back? What a moron. What a fucking moron. Apropos of nothing, Semler was the one with controversial, subject to opinion remarks about the... Who's talking about Semler, home slice? Who is talking about... Sem We're talking about Sadikis. Who's... What was Semler coming to the fucking table for? I think he was blacklisted because he's generally an asshole. You just stop working events, of course. Semler has gone full Manosphere, Western traditionalist, marble statue dude. <laughs> is that the new sign if you're alt-right, if you like marble statues? Is that is that, is that what we're at now? All right, okay, my bad. See, I thought I did. I did like some marble. I do like marble stuff. I'll, I'll, fa I'll phase the mar. I'll do what. I'll do what the American media says. I reject. I want it on record, guys. Richard Lewis will never let you down by loving marble stuff. I, I widely reject marble statues, and I just long for a world where marble statues can be more inclusive uh, of everyone with, with their gold. <laughs> <laughs> hateful surfaces smooth surfaces uh, like what is that like for me you know i've always been partial to granite just just think that's a much more welcoming surface you know this is a great one Sadakist is my favorite caster oh great a fan well surely you'll have something positive to say but from what I've read about him and seen, he seems like an absolute garbage person. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Cheers, fan. He's your favourite, is he? You love him, dear. <laughs> you love him, dear. Like, fuck, he's my favourite. I love him. He's a cunt, like. <laughs> but I love him. <laughs> you never, like, never met him. Just heard things. Heard what exactly? Oh, yeah, other Redditors talking nonsense. Yeah. Big fan. By far the best caster in CS, in my opinion. But he seems a bit unhinged. Big Stick 01. Hands down one of the biggest more. Again, moderators. I know what coup they are now. We talk and stuff. You have got to start banning the, the real morons. Like, please. There's like a handful of names that just have no place being allowed to post anywhere. Like, on the internet. They should just be in the cube. Which they should have no internet access. <laughs> you know what I mean? But anyway, Big Stick or one is one of them. He's fucking terrible. He's terrible. Look, just objective nonsense, just lies, you know. Henry G got even weirder. He did the NFT crypto stuff. Ooh, we so weird. Right, so weird doing the crypto. But he, then he also got into some weird hallucinogenic mushroom shit. By the way, the the the, the mushrooms and the NFTs were always combined, and it was about raising money for charities that used psilocybin to treat mental illnesses like depression and anxiety which by the way all the scientific literature now points in the direction it's one of the most effective therapeutic medicines we have for it <laughs> right so it's a, a, a really good cause it's so weird he's got he's got mental to the point 
where it was nearly all he posted about on Twitter for like a year. Oh, you mean after you guys drove him out of the esports industry for being a GM at Cloud9 and the team not doing well, despite it all happening during COVID and the team never even met each other in person, you then crucified him when Cloud9 pulled the plug on the project and he said, well, I'll just do this now. And this makes him weird. Oh, okay, cool. Then jdm also gone <laughs> jdm imagine all right guys we're doing a thread we're doing a thread about casters and what happened to some of the og casters now spoiler most of the og casters are still casting uh and the thread is pointless and it's a really just a passive aggressive way to say the current casters in this rmr are bad but this is big stick one someone who clearly is fucked in the feed he's got team liquid flair so we're talking about Henry G and how somehow raising money for psilocybin, mental health treatments, charities through NFTs is uh, is bad uh, and weird specifically. Now let me tell you what isn't weird. Bringing up JDM, a retired player, <laughs> in a thread about OG casters, not weird. That's not weird. JDM also got really weird after he left CS. The big sample size of two weirdos one of them being heavy g not a weirdo yeah he wasn't a caster but during covid i will never forget his video talking about how his weird nose breathing exercises would help prevent covid laughing my ass off quick little roundup here from cont bite kirk yay sadakis can't behave semler became far right with QAnon level takes shun bardolf shunned because face it major talent drama spoiler bardolf leveraged his executive position at esl to just be able to just demand that he casts esl events again <laughs> and will never be frozen out because now that face it in esl have been bought by the saudis and merged into a single evil empire he can do what the fuck he wants but that's fine i guess leaving ddk without a partner they haven't been partners for years. DDK was already casting Valorant and James was already casting Apex Legends before they were brought back for PGL in 2021. I mean, we're not doing great on the facts here is what I'm saying. We're not doing we're not doing great on the facts. Pansy went to Valorant because always received unnecessary hate. She went to PUBG before that, uh, of course. Tosspot moved on and went into corporate life. Right. He got that bit right. He, he redeemed himself at the end. He redeemed the cards at the end. Semler is a prick. Uh, feedback there. Bit of feedback there. What happened to the OG casters? Uh, let me tell you my opinion on Semler. He's he's a QAnon motherfucker now, apparently. Um, Dust is in there. I mean, just people just throwing in inf <laughs> people who people may or may not be dating. Very cool. And they are, of course. <laughs> It's Reddit. There's still moronism to get into. Crying. Crying in the club right now. This is Reddit thread. Magic's crying after losing to Astralis end of major run. Now, by the way, losing to Astralis is enough to make anyone cry. Let's just see the clip, shall we, first of all. Now, you'll notice the interview is done by Dinko, right? Now, Dinko, Dinko's a great guy. You know I love Dinko. He's been on the No Majors Club. Love Dinko, love Dinko. Fun, you know, Dinko, yeah, all right. He does seem to be obsessed with Satanism in the modern world. You know, we've, we, we all got quirks. We've all got interests, you know. But we all love Dinkle Finkel, right? Dinko's a good guy. He really is a legitimate nice dude, too. I like him. I'm not just saying it. There's no, like, punchline coming in. Uh, he's a good guy. And uh, he's got a bright future in, in eSports, you know? Finally getting his opportunities. He was the next in line to get those opportunities. He's getting those opportunities. He's working with experienced veterans. You know, he's casted with Henry, casted with Moses. It's great, right? <clears throat> so, uh, you know, interviewing's hard, right? And one of the things that uh, Blast wanted to do, because there was no analysis desk segment, and it was just game, you know, content, fill, break, game, you know. They were doing interviews on, you know, kind of on the fly. And some of the casters were getting up and doing interviews. And Dinko did this interview uh, with Magix, right? Uh, um, after they just got eliminated from the RMR, right? No team spirit 
at uh, at the major you know thank you for joining us i know it's not easy at this point coming onto the interview after just being eliminated in, in such a fashion but uh you know it's not not easy to go out at this point looking at the rest of the year though plenty more trophies to chase but first of all just getting your emotions after uh zero and three loss it sucks I mean, there's not really too much you can say about it, right? But at least looking at the rest of the year, the major, it's it's no longer there. But, you know, you at least have other trophies. The Intro Extreme Masters still there. It's still time for you guys for the rest second half of the year to step up and get some trophies at least. And CS2 around the corner too. Well, seems so. Well, you clearly, it's too many emotions right now, man. It's uh, Thanks for doing the interview anyway. And uh, sorry about that, buddy. Now, <laughs> Richard's going to express some contrary opinions to the reddit knowledge you know they know about broadcasts they know what's going on but first let's just check in with what they had to say about it remember the thread so first we're off to a great start because there's nothing i like more than when redditors and they've done this to me multiple times down the years because basically everyone who creates these stupid drama baiting threads is a loser uh, and scum actually actual scum uh, empty vacuous a void barely a fully formed person they're just scum with empty lives uh just looking to stir up drama on a public forum uh so they get some attention for something they're not even tangentially linked to so there you go there's there's a strong opinion they did this to me if you remember of course where babam you remember that richard's bullying him there's no clips of it never because it never happened but yet people will swear blind to this day i drunkenly and aggressively like braced babam on a sofa when in actual fact i just said go on then do your babam thing wanting him a cast uh because he refused to cast in any other setting at a take tv event which is meant to be people on a sofa chilling out like a summit. He refused to cast unless it was him and one other person of his choice only on the sofa. Which, you know, getting a day rate for that seems a little bit outrageous to me. But what do I know, right? So anyway, let's just check in with the Reddit thread. So objective reality. I like objective reality. Do you like Magic's crying. Did anyone see him crying? I didn't see him crying. Was, was he crying? Did he cry? Did he cry? Uh, is the question. And of course, the answer is he absolutely was not crying, was he? No, he was not crying. Not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, even smiled at one point. So not crying. So immediately out, 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 out of the out of the gate, uh, just utter lies, not a fabrication. Mods, future again, just advice about how I would moderate a subreddit. I know it's always welcome, you know. Like we 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 we, we, we swim in different. Uh, lakes and that's fine that's not even a metaphor i'm saying but anyway uh, magic's crying after losing to so i just delete that for being factually inaccurate like factual inaccuracies aren't they don't help anyone do they oh and the top comment does just say he wasn't crying though uh and then someone says obviously shit title but that's fine but is this the first loser interview for the rmr i don't remember others now okay let's just let's just let's just get back to this right i am sick and tired of these anime fucking losers turning esports into an even more wretched childish bastardized version of sports do you know what happens in the big leagues when teams lose they still do their media commitments do you know why they do their media commitments because the leagues that they're playing in makes them fucking money and the media commitments are part of those contracts you see and so, when you refuse to do a loser's interview, because my feelings are so hurt because I lost, you're actually betraying all of the other partners that make the league work because people want to see that content, uh, whether your feelings are hurt or not. I've seen people lose in outrageous circumstances and still go and do an interview. Seen people get blasted in cup finals, you know, still do an interview. I've seen people lose in the playoffs of the NBA. They're still doing the interviews. So, what? You don't get to go to the major, but, you know. So, I'll just tell you this out the gate. What Magic's did there, he's a cunt. There you go. There's the hot take. Don't care how your emotions are. Do you know what adults do when they're emotional? They keep them in check. <laughs> just a little spoiler for you there. What you've done there is you've absolutely... Fuck Dinko over and fuck the broadcast over, fuck Blast over, and honestly just made yourself look like a petulant fucking child. There, there it is. Magix was a cunt. Who knew a player being a cunt? 
You, I'll show you how easy it is, right? I've lost. I'm not going to the major. Right, Dinko comes over. Listen, mate, plenty of trophies to play for, but can I just get a temperature check on your emotions right now? You know, you've lost... Uh, you know, 0-3, oh you've gone out. And you go, look, well, obviously, it's far from what we wanted. It's far from the target we set ourselves. It really, really hurts not right now. We want it to be there for the last CSGO major, obviously, and we're not. And we're going to take some time to reflect. There you go. You've given me an answer. You've engaged with the question in a way. You know, you haven't said anything. But you've at least done the bare minimum to not fuck over the interviewer and not fuck over the broadcast and not look like a fucking child on... You know, you're a sports... You're an athlete. You're a professional athlete on a fucking salary that I know for a fact dwarfs a normal salary in your region. And what, you can't even just throw the interviewer a fucking ball with some platitudes. We all have to tiptoe around you and your feelings because you don't want to do a loser interview. You know? Nah. Sorry, mate. Magics was a cunt. Sorry. That's unacceptable. I'd have said something if I was doing the interview, if I was holding the mic. <laughs> you know, some, I wouldn't have let him get away with it. I would have pulled his fucking card. But, I, but let's get to the really stupid stuff. What was that interview? Why is the interviewer answering his own question? No, he didn't answer his own question. He had the question. The first question was, how are you feeling? He didn't answer that. He can't answer how Magix is feeling. And the second question was that, you know, still lots to look forward to. It wasn't really a question. It was more of a sort of statement to try and elicit some form of positive response because the first question had been... Sh now, very clear to somebody like me who, you know, I don't know, was doing interviews before you even fucking had a PC. You know what I mean? Like, very clear. You know, you can go and look at my interviews from back in the day. Remember, before I was even known as a journalist, an award-winning journalist, I was the interview guy. So I know a little thing or two about interviews, right? Just saying. Then he goes, this guy here, uh, Armand Ninja, felt like he was rubbing it in he w it was pretty much, how does it feel like being a failure? And this is where you realise that basically, like, where, where players are concerned, fans are just so mentally ill, they're just so delusional. Like, it's actually insane. Nobody, by the way, could have interpreted, nobody could have interpreted, like, those questions as being any negative at all, but it gets worse. So the interviewer asked pretty bad questions. Why would you say there's still other trophies, right? We'll get to that. Uh, when none of that will be on Magic's mind at the moment. And then when Magic doesn't give a long answer, the interviewer just goes, well, clearly too many emotions right now. That was the second question. It was clear he wasn't going to engage with the interview. Perhaps even someone in his ear told him to shut him down. But you wouldn't think about that because you've never worked a TV broadcast. You don't know about production. You don't know you're getting told stuff through your headset while you're trying to do the interview. Uh, you also don't take into account, by the way, Dinko has probably never done an interview before, I want to say. I can't think of one I've ever seen outside of shooting the shit on a sofa or whatever. Or maybe having a, asking a player a question in a tri-cast. I, th I don't think Dinko has ever done a stick mic sideline interview that I can think of off the top of my head. But anyway, recharging my laser, right? Oh, hilarious, uh, hilarious cultural meme there. Completely agree. The interviewer did a horrible job. Maybe asked questions along the lines of, is there anything that stands out in the moment that the team can work to improve upon? Yeah, because that'll be on his mind. He says, why ask, you know, what, what you're going to do in the future? That won't be on his mind. Oh, yeah, well, in the future, what are you going to change so you don't lose next time? That'll be on his mind, Willie. Oh, you've cracked it, mate. You're a fucking genius. Give this cunt a mic. Wire him up right now. Are you fucking stupid? He's got to work on his post-game interviews for sure. Spoiler, he doesn't. He'll probably never do one again. Look at this as well. Just ask Machine. He's done exit interviews at T1. Knows how to talk to people when they're at their lowest. This interviewer sounds like a person with no empathy who's never touched grass. We'll do the second point first. Funky monkey in heaven. You know people who haven't touched grass. People who haven't touched grass. People who get upset when they imagine a player is crying and sad because they lost the video game. No, that's, that's not touching grass. Second part... No empathy. Interesting. Because what I heard, somebody who, again, is above 80 IQ, somebody who's done this for a living, somebody who is, like, socially adept. Uh, you see, what I heard was nothing but empathy. In fact, it was the empathy, if anything, that was tripping him up. Because Dinko felt he had to frame the question with going... 
Ah, sorry, sorry that you lost and it's super hard, but loads of trophies to look forward to. It's not all that bad. If trying to give a fucking player a pep talk is an empathy, what the fuck is it, you silly twat? All oh, right, yeah, it was. That's pure empathy. That comes from a that comes from an exact exact place of empathy. But z you heard zero empathy. So I recommend you get yourself checked for some sort of social disorder because most people would hear empathy there. You know, the empathy right at the start of the sentence. Like people, people would have clocked that. And, and again, another, another follow-up. These interviewers have zero empathy. How can they, F can you, ask such questions? Just F off. Especially when the team goes 0-3. I don't think there should be an interview so the team can process their emotions and not have to do a fucking interview. I think they should be made to do a fucking podcast, me, mate. I think all of them should be brought up. Hey, you decadent fucking pigs. You absolute decadent pigs. You fucking players that are paid a fucking fortune that don't do fucking media work, right? Don't do anything. You offer, you offer the least amount of value to their fucking esports ecosystem. Them, but take the largest part out because anytime your feelings are fucked you don't even play well you won't do media work you won't practice you won't listen to your coach you won't talk to your teammates you won't stop drinking you won't put the pipe down all you 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 all for 50 grand a fucking month well how about this for the new fucking paradigm fuck player feelings i'm sick of it they have absolutely them and their fucking agents have skewed this fucking ecosystem so out of whack nobody can eat but them and then when someone says will you talk sensibly into a camera for fucking two minutes they get mardy arsed about it and then they go and they dry their eyes with the money they barely fucking earned because they didn't even practice because they thought they'd rizzle lizzle dizzle their way through a qualifier you know you got the likes of stewie 2k fucking saying Oh, I wish we didn't have to get up. You know, with 10 a.m. games. 10 a.m. games. And it's not that simple because if you got a game at 10 a.m., you probably have to get up at least at, oh, I don't know, 7. Or you mean like a job, like, and, and actually a job for a very limited amount of time, and it won't always be like that. Oh, and you're getting paid 40 fucking grand, $40,000 a month, are you? Oh, all right then. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, my bad. Have a lie in. Why don't we just skip the qualifier? It's insane. And again, the fans. This is a dumb fucking thing. We're gonna we're gonna talk about esports fans for a separate bit once I finish the RMR stuff. These fans are so stupid, and are so in on the players' behaviour, which has just got worse and worse and worse, and they're just taking more and more and more, and they won't even do the bare minimum. Fuck their feelings. Fuck their feelings. I want all tournament organisers to have compulsory loser press conferences. And I want there to be a sign that says loser press conference in shot. And I want the word loser to be bigger than the words press and conference. And I want it to be spread out over the five fucking players. And in fact, I want the fucking loser press conference desk to, I don't know, just look shit. To be all like fucked up and rickety and have like doilies on it. I want it to I want it to be crap. I want the mic to be slightly fucked up. So every time they try and talk, they're an octave too high. How about that? How about them fucking apples? Yeah, I want it to be I want it to be when you do a loser interview and you, they zoom in on you on the camera, there's just a fucking frame and it's just an L. There's just an L next to your fucking face. Just a big L. An L on your forehead like you're a fucking hologram out of Red Dwarf. How about that? How about them fucking apples? It's pathetic. It's pathetic, the state of these players. Again, why do interviews for 0-3 teams and why literally right after they've lost? Because, you know, re emotional reactions go viral because it's the last time you've seen them in the tournament. Like, also, by the way, this is how cooked fans are. Like, literally, imagine being a Team Spirit fan. You've supported your team. They've gone 0-3 at the RMR. They lost to Astralis. And Magix is given an opportunity to say something to the fans. One last message. Oh, any, do, anything you want to say to the fans? Magix? 
Nah, I'm just going to petulantly have a fucking on-air tantrum because I object to being asked questions after I lost the video game and my feelings hurt. So fuck the fans. So the players even cook you and you all go, oh, yeah, but they're, they're just upset. They're just upset. Couldn't even say... Thanks for the fans. Again, meanwhile, in football, and I'm not saying football and football fans are any is anything to be proud of, but have you noticed this new trend that crept in lately, especially around the time where everyone's getting worried that we're going to get that fucking European Super League? And now, if your team loses, like, more than 4-0, suddenly the players have to pay for your travel expenses for going to the game. That never happened when I were a lad. When I used to go watch Newcastle get fucking spanked at St. James, just fuck, fuck that. Like, you just say ya. When I used to go to away games in Europe, and we fucking got dominated by dog shit teams. No one was offering to pay for my fucking tickets. Tottenham are doing it for this 6-1 that we just put on them. The hurt and we just put on them. But anyway, it feels douchey to me. <laughs> we all know how they feel. It's better to just leave them alone and let them process it. Why is it? Why is it better? Why is it better? It's better for them. Why is it better for the esports ecosystem? Why is it better for the fan experience? Why is it better for the broadcast? It's not. It's not better for any of these things. And then the rest of it, terrible interviewer, awful interviewer. Blast CEO is so erect right now. How think this was a good idea to have loser interview for fuck's sake? Absolutely painful to see how someone can fail to read the room this hard. G2 fan there. Literally implying Dinko doesn't understand that like people don't like losing. One person, your boy Bunsen. Incoming a bunch of bitch made comments about a player shouldn't be interviewed after losing, to which the immediate reply is, why should players be interviewed after losing? <laughs> Sound.